This is a day-by-day -day series. It shows the highs and the lows, the good and the bad. It's our best depiction of how this adventure happened on our own, on public land. All right, Matthew, what's the story today? Day two and a half. Two and a half. Day two, full wow. day number two. I think we're, we're just gonna try to intercept the ones that are migrating through today, see what we can pick out of there. Okay, because all night he's been chewing on me because he says that we saw a big string of, of pronghorn migrating through and I didn't stop and inspect the big one. He said with his naked eyes. I'm like, whoa. All I know is that I could see horns and prongs on it from a hundred yards away with my naked eye, which is better than most of these I can see. So huh. we'll see. Sorry, I didn't see them. I just glassed them up. Well, nothing to look at here. But you did say you get less picky every day. Yeah. Is that true? Or is it just like the same level of pickiness until the last day and then it drops? No, I'll be slightly less picky today. All right. Tomorrow's when pretty much anything legal that's within range is in trouble. Well, there's no reason we got to get up at four o'clock in the morning tomorrow then. Yeah. Because finding a buck to shoot out here is not the problem. So we're 20 minutes into the hunt, maybe a half hour, and I'm quitting counting that 25 bucks. I'm kind of intrigued. Matthew walked over to me and said, hey, I need your spotter. That's always a good sign. What's well, a verdict? I mm, think we can move on. You think so? Yep. I saw one buck over there that seemed decent. He had good prongs, but I mean, like all the other ones, just kind of petered out on the top. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, keep moving. Uh -huh. This guy out here is a mature buck in a big way. He's at least a mile, probably more. But from here, I can see mouth. Oh, he's just staring right at us, which is hard to, to judge. But he's got a lot of mass. Yeah. And he's tall. Is he? I can't quite tell the length. What's that? I can't quite tell the length. Prongs are super far up. Mm -hmm. That's why he carries his mass so well. From the side, when they do this, they don't look very tall compared to ones that are like that. Or ones that flare like this from the side don't look very wide or very heavy compared to ones like that. But then when you turn like this, you're like, oh, wow. Or if they're like this, and if they make that big hoop from the side, they don't look very tall. All of a sudden you see this hoop and you're like, oh, that's what we got with this guy. I've seen a bunch that are just below what, what I'm hoping to find. And I thought by now we'd at least see one that was in that next group up but it hasn't quite happened yet. He didn't make it. No. Nope. Wonder what causes is it the size of the core that creates mass or is it just how good of diet they had and they got a bunch of fat and tissue between that and the horn sheet. 
No Gee. idea. I'm sure someone out there can tell you though. Probably. But they're the only horned animal that sheds. They shed once a year in November and the horn comes off. Well, they start growing another small uh, sheath and it pushes the old one off. And then when it pushes it off, they've got like a little ice cream cone, like a little sugar cone, mm -hmm. pointy thing. That's about that long. And then that's what starts growing over the course of the winter and spring and summer. Crazy. They used to have cheetahs chasing them here. Mm -hmm. They don't need that level of speed anymore. Probably not. But it comes in handy when guys with center fire rifles are walking around out here. Yeah, I'm sure. I say that we have a sandwich and take a nap. We were all taking a nap. And I woke up and was like, yeah, we'll see what else is out here. So I took the tripod out, the spotting scope, and just happened to see this one guy. It's pretty nice. Uh, walking straight at me. He came about a hundred yards over here. Um, so we're just watching him. Not pulling the gun out yet, but he's pretty good. Did I mess you up when I woke up there? No. I just came out here for a minute to see what was here. And there were, there was a buck and a doe just walking right at me. They came maybe 80 yards away. And really? Went around. None in that group back there. What's there, that? there were four or five bucks in that group. I mean, a bunch. They picked up a few as they ran across. So. Nothing. Well, the one I was looking at was close. Close. He was one of. He was the top in the top three or four that we've seen today. Really? Yeah. Not much mass, but probably like fifteen and a half long, five inch prongs. So. Five inch prongs. Pretty good. Big prongs, curled pretty far over so no I didn't you shoot him I was just looking all right I might be exaggerating a little bit well I don't know if the audience realizes this but if I find a buck it's got to be really big before Matthew will shoot it because he thinks it's so funny to get me all wound up. And I'm jumping around I'm like, well, what's wrong with this one? What's wrong with that one? And he just acts like he's completely disinterested. So the audience may not realize the game that's going on here, but if I find it, it's gonna have to be like borderline Wyoming record before he'll shoot it. Now, if he finds it and it's one he likes, he'll be like, yeah, I'm gonna go kill that one. And I'll be like, I showed you three that size. No, I didn't. So that, that's just the game that gets played when he and I are out hunting together. You see new bucks all the time. You just sit here and more move through, more move through. The crowd may not believe this, but Matthew says he wants to go take a closer look at one of them. I don't know if that's just him getting rambunctious or if this one is worth it. But we better get going, huh? Yeah. All right. Did you get a good look at him, Randy? I'd, have, I'd be shooting. He thinks it's the biggest one we've seen of the trip. But since I'm the one who said Matthew might want to look at this one, it doesn't count that I found it. Or it counts against us that I found it, probably. I don't know, I found him. He's just right over that lip, I peeked. Yeah. Saw it was him and I just came back. 
there were two other ones over here that there's four or five that you can see over here yeah there. But around. he's on this side, like where he disappeared to. Yeah. And there's a buck bedded below him, a little buck. And he's got that doe with him again. So I'll just follow you. Or you want me to lead the direction? Um, probably better if you're in front since you know where okay. he's at exactly. Once we get right there, I'll let you, yeah. I'll point you in the back there. That's and I'll let you go first. This one here looks like he hooked in. Really? I thought the one we were chasing hooked back pretty far and that's where he got a lot of his length from. Uh, maybe this is the one that I keep thinking we were chasing. And we were looking at two different bucks. <laughs> that would explain a lot. <laughs> two nice bucks. Just, you were looking at one on the left or the right and I was looking at the other one on the left or the right. Yeah. Anyway, let's uh, see if we can get around them, and okay. if not, we'll just come back here and set up right where they're walking right where by. Where that mound is there? Yeah. Or just on this side of it. Hide the truck down in that little hole there. Yeah, sounds good. All right. I'll be following you. All right. got away. Yeah. We'll find one. I showed him a great big one and he's like, yeah. I still never saw the great big one you're talking about. It was right there. Anyhow, folks, we have tomorrow for sure all day. And I don't know if Matthew wants to sneak in an extra half day on the next day, but I'm all game for it if he is. Yeah, I'm up for it. Oh, he says he's up for it. So we got at least another day and a half. I don't know. Corey, when did we tell you you'd be home, the camera guy? I don't know. I thought we told you that travel day home was on the 9th. Yeah, could be. Or did we say the 8th? We said the 9th, or 8th or 9th. Yeah, I can't remember. What day is it today? 6th? Yeah, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just wondering what how Matthew's standards are going to be tomorrow. Um, so today the standard was the next one that's better than anything else we'd seen. Uh huh. Tomorrow the standard is in the top five or ten of anything we've seen. And then tomorrow night is probably like, let's go find that one that you tried to con convince me to shoot yesterday. What so, if he already migrated through? Then we won't find him. <laughs> I want to find that one with the horn that cut. Did it come down to his came, nose or yeah, under came, his jaw? I couldn't tell, but he also walked with his head cocked yeah. to the side. So that would be that. That I mean, that's like you think of how many thousand buck antelope you you look over to find one like that, and he'd still taste really good, <laughs> really good. The old Scott Jones yeah. method. Scott, we're thinking of you, my buddy. All I've been telling Matthew is, boy, that'd be a tasty one. 
but to no avail. Yeah. All right. Well, we know where this guy is. So All right. Load them we'll up. Pack up and get back home and. Hamburg. Hopefully, hopefully our hamburger is defrosted. Yeah, finally. we got uh, antelope burger tonight with uh, from Matthew's pronghorn that you shot in Nevada, right? Yep. So maybe that'll be the good omen is to eat pronghorn, and then we'll be more inclined to find Big Hank. Yeah. Well, we'll find out tomorrow, I guess. All right, we're gonna find out. Hang with us, folks. I'm not sure what I'm going to do to have more fun than this, but whatever it is, let me know because pronghorn hunting is as much fun as you can have. And then to get to do it with your son for five days or whatever, just top of the list. See you tomorrow.